What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. And one of my new favorite topics is the Yang Gang, aka Universal Basic Income slash the Freedom Dividend. And I've mentioned this on the channel multiple times in the past, but I don't really talk too much about politics on here because it's kind of a big rabbit hole to get uh, get yourself into. But I do like going over econ-based topics, having been an econ major, and a lot of the things going on right now that are being discussed are pretty fascinating topics that I studied a lot in school. And what better than to review than the current leader on the uh, political stage than Andrew Yang, who was also a econ uh, major and an entrepreneur like myself. So really interesting topic that we're going to cover today which has to do with the personal consumption expenditure. And real quick, as a high level, the uh, personal consumption has to do with uh, your, your purchase of consumer goods. When you are buying your non-durable goods, when you're going to the store and you're buying groceries for your house, uh, or when you're buying... Uh, durable goods like a car or a dishwasher or something like that or a, a you know washing machine. So durable and non-durable goods and services kind of are how things are are broken into different pieces here. As a, we're going high level here, just because it's it's really pretty dense information. So we're just going to dive into it from a very high level to, to simplify things down. So when we talk about uh, the personal consumption expenditure, that means how much are we actually spending as a country? And I pulled up one article in the BEA, which uh, is one of my favorite websites, super, super nerdy, <laughs> like intense levels of nerdy, but it's going to be fun to show you guys uh, what it's all about. And uh, if, if you're checking out the screen right here, it's the Bureau of Economic Analysis. I've been following this thing as long as I can remember after college. It uh, it goes through a lot. It, it covers pretty much everything you can imagine about the economy. The link to that will be in the description below so you guys can check out what I'm talking about. You can do all the cool interactive charts with data from the U.S. Uh, and by state as well so you can go and see exactly what people are purchasing in these states, not the exact items, but just a high level of, of what's going on. And why I'm talking about the total personal consumption expenditures from last year is because usually when we're analyzing data from the government, it's in comparison to the previous year. Uh, it's kind of how the rule of thumb goes, where if we're comparing the uh, PCE of the previous year, then we're going to uh, use that growth rate just as a, as a rule of thumb. And what I want to show you guys right now is some quick stats before I show you guys the interactive data here on the BEE, <laughs> my favorite nerdy, nerdy website here. So in 2018, American households spent 12.9 trillion, trillion with a T, 65% went towards services. The biggest components were housing and healthcare at 2.2 trillion each. After these essentials were covered, financial services were next with 80, 856 billion with a B. Americans spent 816 billion on hotels and restaurants. Other forms of recreation contributed 492 billion and transportation services contributed $424 billion. Nonprofits provided $367 billion in services. And the Americans spent more than one-third of expenditures on goods. They spent $2.9 trillion on non-durable goods, such as what I was saying before, food, clothing, and energy. Durable goods total $1.7 trillion. That is your, uh, you know, your furniture, your... Um, your your car, things like that, like really durable, durable, beat upable things. They spent $517 billion on recreational goods, mostly consumer electronics. They spent $518 billion on automobiles and $382 billion on furniture. This is the breakdown of the actual PCE components and the amount in trillions and the percent. As you can see, goods is 
pretty massive and services is even bigger. So we break down the services category into housing, healthcare, transportation, recreation, hotels, finance, nonprofit, and other services. Housing, clear, uh, clear biggest, biggest component next to healthcare. So one of the things that I, I want to talk about now, now that we know we've gone over what a durable good is and non-durable good is, and why the personal consumption expenditure matters and what that has to do with Andrew Yang. And when we look at this from a high level between non-durable goods and durable goods of what the citizens of the United States are purchasing, the consumers are purchasing, we need to take into account that uh, we we have a couple couple moving parts here. We have people making income and they are spending a percentage of that income on each one of these. Not everybody's spend is going to be this exact breakdown. That's a very important part here. The your your balance sheet at the end of the end of each month isn't going to look like this. Okay. Not everybody's going to be going to hotels and restaurants at six percent. And not everybody's going to be doing nonprofits. And uh, the majority is probably going to be going to housing and healthcare. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the vast majority. Most people are paying uh, an obscene amount in rent right now in cities like San Francisco, where uh, I just moved from. So when we when we take this into account, you have to think about uh, what people you're you're in the door amount, what your income is going out to your output. And in terms of the changes here, let's pull up my my BEA here. So these are the percentage changes from the preceding period. So in 2018 compared to um, this current measurement. So we have California here looks like 6% in change in expenditures and Florida 5.7%. So very close, Texas 5.8. This is the chart from 2016 to 2017. I just showed you guys the 2017 to 2018 comparison chart. Because as I said before, once again, we compare previous years to the current uh, year so that we can use a, a growth rate here. So if you look at a couple states, they weren't really, uh, it, it's not that much of a change, but Florida was a substantial change. Florida jumped about a whole percent percentage point, as well as Texas. There uh, and U and Nevada jumped, and there are a lot of contributing factors here. I'm going to go ahead and say that a lot of it is people moving out of major cities and moving into um, different different states because of you know our age range, getting older and whatnot. So I am going to go ahead and say that. When, if and when a, a UBI comes into the picture, like a lot of people are projecting that it will in the near future because of automation, what we could see is we could see almost double, uh, double rates. If we have these based on the current personal consumption expenditures and the current growth rates that we've seen over the past four to five years, we can even go back to 2016 and compare you can see here that Arizona definitely has jumped up almost two points over the past two or three years. And with that said, you have to think about what would happen if you're seeing a 4% 4, 4 increase each year, and all of a sudden you move this massive quantity of personal consumption into each one of these states. This, this is going to trigger a massive economic shift. And this is has to do with the fact that one of the things that I was talking about before here, back to my good old chart, is this is 70%. Personal consumption drives 70% of economic output. 70%. Now, this is a... When, when we're thinking about something that's 70% of our, of our economic output and our, our massive component to GDP here, if we are putting fuel... Behind that, this is how we maneuver around recessions and things like that. And I, I really 
want to emphasize what would happen here. And there's a lot of skeptics out there, a lot of people that have been saying that, you know, oh, how are we going to pay for it? Of course, we're going to be adding a VAT, a value-added tax that Europe's been doing for years now. If you buy anything from Shopify from a store in the UK, you're going to pay a VAT on it. And this should be the way that we operate in the United States. So I, I think that in terms of the personal consumption, this a VAT is considered somewhat of a, a consumption tax. So if we're pushing, if we're pushing fuel behind the personal consumption with an extra thousand dollars a month, pushing into each one of the states that I just showed you on that map. And we're already seeing a 4% increase in personal consumption expenditures every year. If we're pushing $1,000 a month through everybody's pocket into 70% of our output from an economic perspective, we're going to see a huge shift. And that's not like, we're not talking about 20% or even 40%. It's, it is a vast majority of our economy is based on consumer spending, personal consumption. And if we are going to change how our economy functions and if we're going to thrive, if we were to apply a, uh, a defibrillator onto it and say like, here's a shock, let's, let's see what happens. There's nothing better than what you could do uh, at looking at this data, what you could do then increase that uh, amount of personal consumption. I mean, the at 70% currently, and we're seeing from the chart that I just showed you, 4% over year over year from just basic uh, productivity increases and, and people's consumption is steadily growing over time, which is natural. If you all of a sudden just inject uh, capital into that, we're going to see a big, big growth. So that's my my very, very high level way of explaining this. I hope it wasn't too complex. I, I very much try to pride myself on simplifying this stuff down and repeating myself so that people understand, you know, what durable goods are, non-durable goods, what, you know, services are, how how people are going into things like, uh, you know, dry cleaners and uh, financial services and things like that. And where people are spending their money really matters. And it's important to to keep that in mind. When people are buying things, when people are very optimistic about the future and they're purchasing and they're buying regularly every day, that helps everyone. That literally helps everybody. So what you can do today is go to your local small business, buy a, you know something from them, a biscuit if it's a coffee shop or a piece of, piece of bread if it's a bakery, a biscuit if it's a coffee shop, buy a cup of coffee if it's a coffee shop, a biscuit if it's a bakery, help them out because this is 70% of the economic output that we're talking about here. If you, as the consumer watching this, participate in your consumption, increasing your consumption at a reasonable rate, um, you can change the way the economy works. And a great example of this is organic food. Everybody decided they wanted organics, and what happened? Every single major corporation had to shift. Started with a teeny little industry, and now look at it. Everywhere you go, there's billboards for organic. Every Everything in the shopping center is, is freaking organic now. It's insane. It's amazing, and our health is going to result. It's going to absolutely help everybody having healthier food, but this was driven by personal consumption and consumer demand. These are the things that are controlled by the people. These are the types of economic shifts that can be controlled if the messaging is correct. And universal basic income is a really clever way of absolutely supercharging this. Uh, and, and it's very much downplayed. I know a lot of people are stoked about the idea of getting an extra 1K a month. But from a macro perspective, it is a... It, it, it would change the game. And whatever you say about how you can pay for it, you can figure out how to pay for it. It's pretty straightforward with taxing massive corporations and their transactions that are taking place, financial transactions on Wall Street. Every time you make a trade, you, you, you tax that. There's all sorts of transactional ways of, of making money 
as a country. And really interesting stuff here. I'll leave you guys with that. I hope you guys liked this episode. If you did, consider subscribing. Leave a like. It helps the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you guys on the next episode.